Hey, welcome to the Sermonary Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Taylor, and today I want to talk to you about some time-saving tips for busy pastors. I know how busy being a pastor can be, and you, there's so many things that we need to do. We wake up on Monday morning, and there's another sermon that needs to be written. There are things in the church that need to be taken care of. There are staff uh, items that need to be taken care of. There are programs and events, and you might have weddings or a funeral, and things just kind of pile on top of each other. And honestly, a lot of you guys that are listening, uh, you may be a bivocational pastor, which means that you're even more busy because you have a full-time job on top of a full-time job. Uh, because I know that in ministry, there's no such thing as part-time ministry. So I want to give you some time-saving tips Four busy pastors that I believe that you could apply today and start actually seeing results. Now, I think that these are really, really important to apply uh, for us because there's a lot of time that we waste and there are a lot of things that we can do to save a lot of time that are little small decisions that we can make that actually give us some really big returns. In fact, I think that I can help you with these tips. I can help you save hours uh, every single day because there are some things that, that uh, there, there's a lot of time that we waste. And so I want to go through these and, uh, and give you these really quickly. One, and this is probably one of my favorite. This is one of the ones that when I'm stuck or I just feel really overwhelmed, like there's a lot of things to do. And sometimes when you get so overwhelmed with so many things to do, you kind of freeze and don't want to do anything. This is a technique that I use. It's called the Pomodoro Technique. And this was uh, kind of invented in, in the 1980s, I think in 1989, actually, um, by uh, Francesco Cirillo. And he used the Pomodoro Technique, which Pomodoro means tomato in Italian. And he actually used a tomato timer, like a kitchen timer. Uh, and he blocked off 25 minutes of just pure work. I'm going to do 25 minutes of pure work. And then I'm going to take a five-minute break after that 25 minutes. And then I'm going to do this again for 25 minutes. And then uh, and then I'm going to take a break for maybe 15 minutes or, or, or t- t- to 20 minutes. And each time that you complete a Pomodoro, you track your progress on paper. And you actually do this about eight times throughout the day. Now, the idea of this is that for 25 minutes, you work on one thing. Uh, That could be your sermon. That could be uh, a a blog that you might be writing. Or if you're working on a book, it might be you're working on a book, or it might be a program that you're planning, or whatever it might be. I think for most of us, it's probably sermon prep that we could really use this technique for. But you work on one thing for 25 minutes, and then you take a five-minute break. And then you work on it again for 25 minutes, and then you take a five-minute break. And once you've completed an hour and 40 minutes of work, you take a uh, a 15 to 25-minute break, and then you go back at it again. And you do that, uh, you, you, you do eight Pomodoros basically. And honestly, you can get more done in four hours doing this technique than you would most days. So check out the Pomodoro technique. And if you want more information on it, you can, you can Google it and find out more. There's a lot of inf- information and how to best use that. The next one is schedule your to-do items. Now, we often have a to-do list. We have a checklist of things that we need to do, uh, but I don't like task lists. I like to schedule when I'm actually going to work, and here's the reason why. It's really difficult for us to prioritize what needs to be done when we just have a task list, when we just have things uh, on a list that need to get done at some point today. If we actually schedule them and make an appointment on our calendar to actually do those things, they're more likely to get done because, and we don't have to worry about them because we know I have a lot of time today to actually get this task done. Uh, If we don't do this and suddenly it's five o'clock and we haven't done most of the things on our to-do list because we were just going to get to them at some point during the day. But if you actually, instead of having a to-do list, you actually schedule your to-do list, uh, you are going to see that you're going to get more of those things done. The next thing is decide your top three. Every single day, write down, here are the top three things that I need to do today in order for it to be a successful day. Here are the top three three things that I'm going to get done, or here are the top three things that I'm going to work on. Maybe for you, every day needs to be, I'm going to spend an hour in sermon prep today. Uh, I'm going to spend, or, or I'm going to get this part of my sermon written today. Decide your top three that you're going to do. And if you get those top three things done, then you're good. 
The day is good. You've had a successful day. And anything else that you get done is icing on the cake. But you've got to prioritize and figure out what are the top three things that we're going to get done, that I'm going to get done today, uh, and then it's going to be a successful day. The next one is remove distractions. Now, this is an obvious one, uh, but uh, honestly, removing distractions it makes such a, a, a big difference. In fact, if you go back to the Pomodoro technique, one of the things that is really important for that 25 minutes that you're working is to put your phone, your iPad, your computer, whatever it might be, on airplane mode. And that way you can um, y- y- you don't get those voicemails, you don't get those text messages that are coming through. We get in these text messaging trains these 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 long threads I hate group texting uh, and so people are having a conversation your phone is constantly buzzing and it has nothing to do with you turn your phone on airplane mode when you're trying to get things done just switch it off uh, another great thing to do is turn your email off maybe decide that I you're gonna check your email just twice a day you're maybe you're gonna check it at 10 in the morning and then you're gonna check it at four in the afternoon before you go home Um, but get rid of distractions. Give yourself permission to turn these things off that distract you. Your biggest one probably being your phone and maybe your computer. Here's another one, and this one's kind of weird, but this one has made a big difference for me because of the way that the brain works, and it's save your carbs for dinner. Now, I'm not one of these anti-carb people. I love bread. I love pasta. I love all of these great things. I grew up in New Orleans, and we love carbs in New Orleans. We put breadcrumbs on everything. Um, But save your carbs for dinner. And here's the reason why. Your carbs will basically begin to kind of create this fog in your brain. If If you're eating a bunch of carbs for breakfast, your pancakes, biscuits, all these kind of things, uh, your, your, your brain is going to get tired uh, because it's got to process that and you got to burn a lot of calories to process that. Uh, it's the same for lunchtime. Instead of going to lunch and having a hamburger, go to lunch and have some protein or salad, some vegetables, those kind of things. It's going to keep your brain active. You're going to see a major difference in the way that your brain functions if you wait and have your carbs at the end of the day rather than have them for breakfast or or for lunch. Uh, That was a really hard habit for me to break because, you know, our staff guys, we love to go out to eat lunch. We love to go eat good food. And, uh, and and we have to make the conscious decision. If I'm going to eat this burger, if I'm going to eat this sandwich or this po' boy, whatever it might be, I know that I'm going to be useless the rest of the day. My brain is not going to function. I'm going to want to take a nap and I'm just going to feel tired and groggy. Uh, the next one is get outside, go for a walk. And this one is a time saving, uh, trick because a lot of times we get stuck. We just kind of get in this fog. We got to, we know we've got to do something else, but we just don't feel like doing it. We end up just staring at our computer for a while before we ever actually start doing something. It's amazing. If you just get outside for 30 minutes, get some vitamin D and go for a walk. What a difference it can make for you. And obviously, if you live somewhere in the world, depending on what time of year, it may be hard to get outside. For us here in in lower Alabama, it's been raining every day for four weeks. Uh, So it's hard to get outside and get vitamin D on days like that. But just get up and go on a walk. Move around, get that blood flowing, and then uh, sit back down and get what you need to get done. Maybe this is a great time to combine going out for a walk and then sitting down and doing the Pomodoro technique. So I'm going to go for a walk and then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do a couple of Pomodoros and work straight for 25 minutes, take a break, 25 minutes, take a break and see what I can get done. But when you're just kind of in that mode of just, you're just staring at your screen, you're staring at your computer, you don't, you you know, there's things to get done, but you just don't feel like it. Go uh, get some, some stimulus for your brain and go outside and go for a walk. It's amazing what vitamin D and just getting that blood flowing can do. The next one, and this is one that I think a lot of pastors struggle with. I think it's just in our brain. It's just the way that we are. It's our personality. But we need to declutter. Clean off your desk. Get a clean desk. Get, get, get all the junk, all the paper, all the files, all the trash, all the old coffee mugs that have stuff growing in it. Get those off of your desk. Just clean your desk. Declutter things, get all the knickknacks off and you're going to, you're going to see a big difference. It creates a mindset. I mean, when you walk into your office and your office is just a filthy wreck, you kind of begin to feel like your office looks, but if you come in and your office is straightened, it's clean, maybe get rid of junk that you don't need. 
you're going to feel that, that the way your office looks then. You're going to feel, it's just going to make you feel different. But not only is it going to make you feel different, it's going to, you're going to be able to find things. You're going to know where things are. You're not going to have things uh, sitting there that are going to take your attention away. And, oh, this is an interesting paper, and, you just, and, it, and it distracts you from what you're supposed to do. Uh, get rid of the clutter on your desk. Get rid of the clutter in your office. The next one is cancel some meetings. Now, if 2020 and the pandemic taught us anything, it's, How many meetings can be done by email? Uh, Most meetings, I believe, can be done via email. Cancel some meetings. Look at your calendar and say, which of these do I need to be at? And which of these can just be an email? Or which of these can be handled by someone else? Go through your calendar and prioritize. We fill our calendars up with meetings. And those of you that know me know I hate meetings. I especially hate meetings pointless meetings. Now, there are some meetings that we need to, to, to attend. There are some meetings that are a necessary evil. Uh, but most of the meetings that I think that we schedule uh, are, are pointless. Uh, one of the most profound statements that I've heard on meetings actually comes from my friend Kula Callahan at, at StoryBrand. And she said, if, if you have to stop your business for more than 30 minutes, then it better make you money. Uh, and that can be true even for the church. You know, your time is valuable. I mean, people rely on you. There are counseling meetings that that you need need to be a part of. There are sermons that need to be written. There are things that need to be done that only you can do. And if you're wasting time in meetings that you don't need to be a part of, you're devaluing your time and you're really robbing um, ministry opportunities there. So look through your calendar and and, and just see what, what can I get rid of. The next one is plan the next day. Now, this one is one that it takes intentionality. But before you leave the office, decide what your top three are going to be the next day. What are the top three things? And maybe even schedule the rest of your to-do list. Here's is, here is what needs to get done the next day. And now you have a plan of how you're going to tackle the next day. Go ahead and write down what the next day is going to look like. Control your time. I think that that's so important for us to understand. We can control, I believe we can control at least 80% of our time. Now, there are things that happen. In ministry, there are always the unforeseen. There are always people that are going to show up at the office that are, need help, that need emergencies. There are things that happen. But for the most part, we let those things control us. We let other people control our time because we fail to plan our day. Before you leave the office today, what does tomorrow look like? If you can control tomorrow, what does it look like? And write those things down. Write down your at least your top three and when you're going to get those done uh, and, and do that. The next one, and this is really, really hard for me, don't multitask. Now, here's the reason why. I am a multitasker by, by nature. I, am, I thought I was good at it. Uh, and the older you get, the more you kind of realize that maybe I'm not as good as I thought. And, and here's the reason why. Uh, our brain needs to refocus when it's shifting from different things, especially now that we have screens all around us. If I'm reading a book and then I turn to read a screen, uh, my brain has to completely shift gears. It, my eyes and everything have to completely shift gears. Depending on what kind of work you're doing, it can take you up to 25 or 45 minutes to refocus our attention on any given task. That means when you're in the groove of something and you're, maybe you're sitting down and you're writing your sermon and then you've got to stop and turn around and have a meeting, it takes up to 25, maybe even 45 minutes for your brain to completely shift gears and, and focus in on what you're trying to do. That's a lot of time that's wasted. Now, we think, a lot of us think we're really good at multitasking. Uh, the reality is, is we're better at focusing on one thing and we can get one thing done. If we just focus on that, we can get it done a lot better than if we're trying to do a whole bunch of different things. We might be kind of good at it, but I, I believe that we're still robbing ourselves of the potential that we have in getting different tasks done. So stop multitasking. If you're a multitasker, you're wasting a lot of your brain's calories and energy by having to refocus every single time that you start doing something else. So focus on one thing at a time. Again, it goes back to this is where that Pomodoro technique can help. 
I'll focus on one thing at a time. Now, here's one more, the last one that I believe is pretty exclusive to pastors, uh, and that's use templates. Template things. Um, one of the things that we say in marketing is automate everything that you can. This is a great business principle. Automate as much as you can. I think for pastors, if you can use templates, you know, use templates in your sermon writing. Maybe you have a custom template that you create. You write your sermons the same way every single time. Create these sem- templates with some prompts, uh, prompts, not props, prompts inside of them to, uh, to help you, to keep you from staring at a blank screen. This is one of the things that we've put inside of Sermonary. Uh, we have several different templates in there. In fact, we, we uh, just... Um, started promoting our Tim Keller one that's not inside the Sermonary dashboard, but we'll put the link to that in the show notes for Tim Keller's sermon template. Uh, and basically what this is, is it's it's basically kind of like an outline structure, but it's got little prompts. So it doesn't matter what passage you're teaching uh, this Sunday, y- you can use these prompts to help you write a different sections of your sermon. And what this does is not only does it keep you from staring at a blank screen, and so it gives your brain ideas and inspiration on writing different sections of your sermon, but it helps you craft a very organized sermon that flows in a way that your church can comprehend it, understand it, and really consume it and enjoy it. And, uh, and so I really encourage you to template anything that you can. If you do funerals and weddings, template those sermons that you, that you do for those. Um, it, there are things that you do over and over and over again, create templates for these things. I believe that there are things that we can do to save time. In fact, that's one of the reasons why we created Seminary and Ministry Pass is because we know that pastors are extremely busy and you're doing more than just writing a sermon. And we want to make sure that we provide you with the resources and the tools to help you save time so that you can give the very best of yourself to your church, the very best of yourself to your ministry, the very best of yourself to your family, and the very best of yourself to your God. And because that's what he uh, deserves from us. That's what he commands from us. And so we want to provide you with the resources and the tools to help you do that. I hope these tips are helpful. I really encourage you to check out the resources that we have available inside of Sermonary and inside of Ministry Pass. I don't talk about Ministry Pass a lot on this podcast, um, but these are great resources that you can utilize to save you time. I would love to know what you think about the tips in the comments uh, below. Also, let me know if you have some other time-saving tips that you use, and I would love to include those in the next time that we do an episode like this. Thank you guys so much, and I look forward to seeing you next time.